there folks, it's Prime here from Down4X, stupidlyepic.com. I just wanted to do a, a little video chat thing about, well, not a chat obviously, because we're not chatting, but just like a little sort of retrospective on some old games that I like. So I'm going to maybe be doing maybe a couple of these every week maybe, just like talk about an old game that I liked or talk about like a new game that I'm looking forward to or something like that. So these are going to be different from the the RAM the RAM things. Like like I'll I'll probably do a RAM one because they're quite short every I don't know every couple of days or something like that. So like that should be fine. Anyway, so <clears throat> the first game I'd like to talk about is Earthworm Jim on the SNES and Mega Drive or Genesis if you're American. Earthworm Jim was was it for me. Earthworm Jim, back when I was a kid, was... It was the game that got me into games. It was... It wasn't the first game I played. And when I went, like... I was into games before, but... It wasn't, like, it wasn't so passionately as it was for Earthworm Jim. As soon as Earthworm Jim came out, I seen that. <coughs> That's what spurred me on to want to design things and become a, like a character designer for games like that was always my passion from like 11 years old up to maybe I don't know mid 20s like 24 something like that I don't know what happened like like down the line the passion sort of started to dissipate and I just I became more interested in voice acting and doing you know voices for like Down for X and things like that and King Donut and all that sort of stuff but Earthworm Jim at the time was like, this was like a 13 year thing for me when I was like, I passionately really, really loved games because there was something about the way Earthworm Jim was designed and all the bad guys were designed, like Professor Monkey for a Head and, you know, the evil queen pulsating bloated vest ring, sweaty pus filled malformed slug for a butt. <clears throat> Just the way these characters were designed, the way they were animated, I, in my head I was thinking, man, if you can make a game about a worm in a super suit. You can make a game about anything. So it really spurred my imagination. It made me really want to... made me want to get into games design. And again, that dissipated as time went on. I've, I've come to want to do different things rather than, rather than actually draw characters because I've found within myself that I don't really have the patience for it, you know? I can draw things and I'm fairly fairly decent at drawing. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm not like a beautiful artist and I'm not I'm not absolutely terrible, you know, it's not like stick figures or anything like that, but <clears throat> I just never really had the, the patience with myself to sit and like do frames of animation and things like that and I, I, I would just get annoyed with myself so that passion slowly started to disappear. I still de design things now and again, you know, like the the reviews that we do on our website and stuff like that. But it's nothing major, nothing nothing as passionate as what I was back then, you know. But yeah, Earthworm Jim was the game that started it off for me. Earthworm Jim was it was my hook into gaming and the culture that it brought. You know, the the whole wars that Sega and Nintendo used to have, and then it was Sony and Xbox or like Sony and the Dreamcast or whatever like that, you know. All of that. I used to buy magazines and everything. Like after after I played Earthworm Jim, that was the that was the stepping stone to get into all of that culture, you know. Before even the internet came around, <clears throat> or at least very early in its in its uh, in its stages, you know. So anyway, um, the reason why I wanted to talk about Earthworm Jim is because I just wanted to. If you've never played it before, like like it's an older game, so I'm sure most of you have probably played it. But if you haven't. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've got a really bad cough recently. Anyway, the reason why I'm talking about it is, but is just to sort of introduce people who may not be aware of what this character is, because it is quite old. So, like a younger generation might not understand who this character is and what he meant for games and whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, it's this. It's about this worm who gets caught inside this super-powered mechanical suit, and you know. It, He's, he's the worm head pops out of the suit and you know he's got big eyes and things like that. It's really cartoony, um, but he's, but he can also look really epic and muscly and, and like you know it, it just depend de depended on who was uh, who was leading the charge at the time. It was David Perry or Doug Apple. Doug Apple was the original designer who wanted to keep it all loose and cartoony and animated, 
that David Perry, who used to run Shiny Entertainment, used to uh, used to always want it to be kind of like this is Earthworm Jim. He's a superhero. He's muscly and he's strong. You know, he's like he's a hero. He's the man. You know, and I liked both. You know, but I always had the respect for Dr. Naple because because he was the actual designer of it. I always had it in my head, man. Dr. Naples a, a special guy because you know he's, he's really good at animation and you know with this new army krog campaign that's come out like i, I instantly donated what I, like well not donated but you know i i kickstarted what i could and you know I, i'm so glad that they've got that kickstarter campaign sorted out um <clears throat> but yeah earthworm jim really well animated game it was a 2d platformer with like shooting like when, like <sighs> I can only equate in my head joypad layouts to the PlayStation controller now, so you're going to have to bear with me. Like, square, if you were holding square, that would be shoot. And while you were holding the shoot button, you couldn't move, but you could aim in any direction. Or like, eight directions you can you can aim around. Which was amazing. And, uh, yeah, it, it had, like, if you press the circle button, again, I'm equating this to PlayStation controls, the circle button was, like, he, the suit would take his head out and whip whip with the whip with the worm. It's like a whip thing, so you could whip enemies and you could whip hooks and the worm would wrap around the hook so you could swing to the to an, another area, you know. Uh, X button, cross button, whatever you want to call it, um was jump. Uh, that was it was it was based on the, the Mega Drive controller, so there was only three controls at the time and then they added more for F1 Gym 2. Um Earthworm Jim 2 is really good as well, by the way. We'll, we'll get into that later on, though. Like, not in this video, but maybe some other time. It's just as good, though, and probably even a bit more so. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, controls were brilliant. The game was fluid and smooth, and there was an awful lot of really well-done platforming sections, as well as combat while you were platforming. Like, the enemies would be strategically placed around the level, so that if you were swinging... An enemy would start chasing you, so you'd like the next platform you would have to get to. You'd have to shoot it or whip it as it, as it was coming at you, you know. And the game was nails. The game was really hard to play. It was like a really solid game. Um, but as a kid, I remember completing it. And when Earthworm Jim 2 HD came out, you know, like I know it wasn't like it wasn't anything to do with Doug to Apple, but I still bought it because I'm a fan of Earthworm Jim, you know. And uh, put it on the the original difficulty setting of like the the Genesis version of it or the or the SNES version of it. And uh, yeah, I, I got to like twelfth place in the world on the PSN. You know, I was just like, yes, I want to be number one. But there was some stages that I just could not get past without it. You know, it was it was extremely difficult. So I would die a few times at those stages. So I'm not not the best player, but I'm close. You know, I, I think I've slipped to like twenty third or something like that. But yeah, it's like a fantastic game. There was very, very imaginative levels. Like each level was so different from the last, and you would just the game. The game had this sense of when you completed a level, you like when you got to the end of the level, you were like yes, because you got to see something completely different in the next level. The only thing that was similar through through the game, the game was uh, the stages between each level would be like a spaceship ride to the next stage you know he would be on his little pocket rocket thing is what it was called and he would be racing this other character that was a crow called Psy Crow it was this crow with a, like a spacesuit on that had a rocket pack and he would be racing them as well and between levels you would race Psy Crow but then when you got to the next level they were, they were all different levels like each level was each level was so substantially different from the last but it always taught you, as you were playing through the game, how the character played, you know? And each trial that you would have to go through in terms of platforming was more complex than the last. So it was... It was maybe not to the, the amazingness that, like, uh, Portal was in terms of teaching you throughout the game, but it was, it was never unfair, you know? It would always... It was like a cross between Portal and Mega Man. The, the, in Mega Man... You get taught as you're playing the game. And Portal, you only use all the powers that you learn, and you use them in different... Like, you, you've, you've only got the powers in Portal that you have. And the only thing that's added to you is the ability to shoot two Portals instead of one. Like, initially you're shooting one, but then later on you get to shoot two. And, and then, like, an, an in-Portal and an out-Portal. But that's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm kind of equating Earthworm Jim to this, because in Mega Man, you... You only have 
like you have p powers that escalate as you get through the game but in Portal you've only got the one sort of be basic thing the Earthworm Gym is kind of like a mix between both the level structures and the powers that you have stayed the same but the levels would get more and more complex with with each level and the trials that you would have to go like like there was a bit in the, the final level in the Buttville level where <clears throat> there's like hooks that are like dotted like diagonal from each other and you've got to whip to each hook and you've got to swing back and forth up the hook so you can get to a platform higher up you can't see it here like there's a platform up here and there was hooks like diagonally down from each other and you had to keep on hooking your way up and then swing over to that platform and get to it and then run to the next part of the level so but to start off with in the first level you're only introduced to the whip and maybe one hook and it'll swing you over you know but then in the second level there'll be like two consecutive hooks so you swing and then when you when you get swung over to the next one you've got to hook onto the next one and swing further over you know so yeah like the game had really imaginative levels really imaginative villains the characters all of the characters even just the basic standard enemies throughout the levels were all extremely well animated so like i was saying this is when I, when i was playing the game i was like i was like 11 or something and in my head i was like this game is incredible like if you can if you can make a game of, like about this that's just funny nonsense that's really well animated you can make a game about anything at all so my imagination started going nuts you know as uh, to start off with, I would only ever draw from gym, and then I remember my English teacher in high school, when I when I got to like second year or something like that in high school, I showed her a picture of Earthworm Jim, and she was like, "Oh, that's cool, but have you drawn anything that's your own design?" And I thought to myself, like, "I haven't really, no, I haven't." So it was all thanks to my English teacher that when she seen that, she said, "You know, start designing your own stuff." So I started doing it, and I suppose you can call my stuff quite contrived and all that it's all it's all really based on the kind of stuff that I've already played you know so yeah like I just just a quick little rundown of Earthworm Jim like I think there's like seven or eight levels in it it's not that long you can complete it in like an hour or something like that if you know what you're doing and you know I do so like I, I occasionally just switch it on and play it so yeah like Earthworm Jim uh, I'll try and link to some images or something like that in the, in the description of the video or something so you can understand like if you've not seen him who he is and what he's like you know maybe link to some gifs or something like that of his animation cycles and things like that because it's really really well done and the music done by Tommy Tallarico the guy is a genius it's the guy that does the video games live events this Tommy Tallarico guy he done all the music for the first MDK game as well and the music the Tommy Tallarico is a genius for like video game music composition. He's, he's like he's essentially like the American version of Akira Yamaoka, which is the, one of the reasons why we, in the uh, Street Fister episode of Down to 4X, we had Akira Yamaoka versus Tommy or Tommy Tallarico, and they were fighting each other, you know, or or I can't remember if it was them fighting each other or it was them fighting, you know, the the end boss or whatever it was. But yeah, like th this this is why I equate both of them in my head because like Akira Yamaoka is so prolific in terms of uh, he's, he's able to do all these different styles but his main style is the sort of eerie stuff but Tommy Tallarico is more the sort of digital sort of thumpy kind of music and uh, he's really good at you know the sort of synthesized sort of digital sounds and all that so they're both great in their own ways you know and they're, they're the two com composers that I, I rate the most highly in my mind you know I know that there's the you know the <clears throat> Nobu Uematsu or something like that uh, he's he's really high as well, eh? But in terms of in terms of in my head from all the older games that I used to play, certainly Tommy Tallarico, because MDK that's probably another game that I'm going to talk about as well. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Um, I'll probably do another one of these videos sometime during the week as well, maybe Sunday or Monday or something like that. Well, this is Friday now, so I might get one on Sunday. I don't know. But we'll do one every so often, and uh, hopefully this will be another avenue for us as a website to pursue. Um, because I, I know it takes ages for Down to 4X to come out, and people who have been waiting patiently for it, we thank, thank you all very much for your patience, but it does take a while to get out, so 
in the in the down times I suppose there's something that I can do, you know, to, to try and keep you entertained or to try and at least get some sort of content out there that's not just text on a website, you know. So if this is something that I can do more often that would sort of help ease the ease the transition between episodes, then I'm all for it. So please let me know in the comments section any games that you suggest that I can maybe talk about because if there's even any games that you think that, like, I might like that I've maybe not played before, like, I, I don't have a list of all the games that I've played, I've played too many of them. But if there's any games, like, later on down the line when you've heard me talk about a few games, you're like, well, you might like this, and, you know, I might have played it, I might have not, but either way, I'm open to it, you know, and if I have played it, I might, I might talk about it, you know, if you suggest it. So, please, by all means respond in the comments section um, I'm, I'm always going to be pimping this stuff on Twitter anyway you know because we're kind of hunting for hits anyway because of the lull time between episodes of Dinner for X or computer beeps or whatever but yeah so thanks for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>